Welcome back to Hometown TCG, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John. And I'm Josh. And guys, our community has given us a fantastic suggestion. Shout out to all of our patrons for this one. Our patrons and our community has seen not only the Hometown TCG mm -hmm. community explode, but the Flesh and Blood community as a whole just absolutely blow up. It's doubled, it's tripled, it might have even quadrupled. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to give some basics, some back to the basics advice, and we're going to do an overview of every single hero in flesh and blood. So when we're looking at these overviews, we're gonna look at what that hero does well, what they struggle with, uh, some of their common play lines, some of their favorite cards. Uh, so you can get an idea of, of what they do and maybe if you'd wanna play with them. Uh, yeah, you can evaluate you, if you wanna play them even against your mm, own collection, right? Exactly. Based on what you have. So let's begin in a place that you used to call home, your mm. initial favorite hero in the game. Yeah, Reinar was a surprise for me. I didn't think I would like him, but I ended up loving him. <sighs> so what's so cool about him is he can just have these big explosive turns and just go off on your opponent. Uh, and he's kind of versatile too, which is really fun. Oh, so the versatility comes from a couple of the weapon options you can do. It's it, There are only a couple heroes that have you know varying weapon options, so it's really cool that Reinar is one of them. And, and he can play a weapon option that maybe offers a little more consistency, or a weapon op option that leads into that, it, it, that explosive potential mm -hmm. like you were talking mm -hmm. about. So one of the other unique things about him is his keywords. So we want to look at the keywords of all these characters. Yes. And his is Intimidate. Oh, so what Intimidate does is when you intimidate your opponent, they take a card from their hand and they banish it for the remainder of that turn. Mm -hmm. So that card is now not usable if it's an instant. It's not usable to defend with and it really limits your opponent's options. You know, maybe you banish the only card they wanted to block mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. but where it really shines is when you stack multiple instances. Yes, because if you go Intimidate 1, Intimidate 2, Intimidate 3, Intimidate 4, all of a sudden they can't block at all, and that's very powerful, especially against certain decks. Oh, and Reinar really leans into this whole if your opponent can't block with multiple cards in your hand, they get to do more. So it's, it's a very interesting play style. It's by itself standing alone. It's a The keyword's a little underwhelming, but mm -hmm. as soon as you stack multiple instances together, it can get insane. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing that I think he does the best is he can get these overwhelming turns when your opponent wants to block. And that's especially powerful against more of a control defensive type deck. He can just make it True. unblockable. Absolutely. So that kind of leans into where he shines most is those big explosive mm -hmm. turns. So the multiple intimidates make things seemingly unblockable. And when you can chain together a 20 plus damage attack in an unblockable turn, oh, that can just be just mm -hmm. completely overwhelming. It doesn't matter what the format is. Right. Uh, another thing that he does that I think he shines at is y make use of his weapons. So he has uh, some great ones. So if you're looking at the club, that's a great one where with one card you can do four damage. It's just really consistent when you're defending. He can use things like the claws for just explosive turns. And then he even has the meat axe, which that can give you another source of intimidate. True. And it, it can be very powerful in its own right. And we'll talk about that play line later, but the mm -hmm. Meat Axe being introduced in, as an option for Reinar is very, very interesting. Uh, but like every hero, he's got his weaknesses, right? There are places where Reinar struggles a little bit. And the first one we mentioned already, it's the fact that the keyword Intimidate by itself, it's not as cool as something like Crush or Reprise. I mean, it's a little underwhelming if it's just one Intimidate. Right, one Intimidate just doesn't do much for you. They're like, okay, I just won't block with that card. Yeah, I'll, just, well, I'll pick something else, I'll, right? I'll exactly. stop you anyway. All right, so he does have to have a series of the right cards to really make that happen. Sure. Uh, another thing is that he doesn't race that well. If you're going back and forth with your opponent, just trying to dish out as many attacks as you can, normally after a turn or two of it, you're just going to fall behind. Yeah, he punishes the player playing Reinhardt not knowing how to block efficiently and effectively. You have to know when you want to take damage, when you want to do damage. It makes him a little bit more of a difficult hero, hero but so much fun to play. Mm -hmm. uh, he, his armor, and mainly scabskin leathers, and I guess gambler's gloves, do add some very interesting and explosive potential though, right? That's that's. But you're gambling a little bit. So that's the downfall. There are times that you can look for this explosive potential and lose, and that is an area where if you take a bunch of damage expecting to do three attacks, you roll that scab skin, you come up mm -hmm. short, mm -hmm. 
you can lose a game just off of that turn. <laughs> so don't get caught in that trap is kind of what we want to say there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, finally, the cards DPC on their own without Intimidate, not very good. Right, a lot of times the cards cost three cards. Uh, the card itself to play, yes. the card to pitch, and then it makes you discard a card from your hand. And it'll be like three cards for seven, eight damage. That's not good DPC. That's just not great. We're not a fan of that. So you have to make sure, and that's all these statements are what makes him the setup hero that he is, right? Because of his consistent lines of play are inefficient, you have to set up a big line to mm -hmm. really get effective mm -hmm. and get over the top. Um, so we've talked about kind of where he shines and where he doesn't shine, and it kind of comes with two different play styles. Do you want to talk about the uh, the explosive or the consistent play style? So I'll talk about uh, just the consistency okay. of the club. So what's great about that is it's one card for four damage, yes. which is... It, fantastic it's, it's DPC. fantastic. That's what you want to do. And a lot of times he'll just block out and do that club, and he'll get some medium turns where yeah. he intimidates. He'll intimidate your whole hand and do a decent amount of damage. Yeah, and that deck is very, very grindy. It's very consistent, and it offers a lot of a lot of potential for those who are willing to stick to their plan, right? As soon as you go off book with that deck, however... You can fall behind, and if you really want to go off book and kind of take your chance, you want to look at the explosive explosive version of Reinar, which is chaining Blood Rush Bellows into several barraging beatdowns into a quad intimidate turn, maybe getting a couple action points, and using your claws and doing, oh, what, 27, 28, 32 you're, damage? You're doing, you're doing a lot of damage on these turns, and it's unblockable. So the claws just... It'll give you a little consistency on, on doing multiple attacks on those quad intimidate turns. Yes, so the claws are definitely beneficial there, but there is one more playstyle that we kind of introduced briefly, and it's not super popular yet, and that's the Meat Axe playstyle. Right, the Meat Axe has yet to be developed a little bit, so what's cool about it is it can be one card for five damage yep. just on your turn, but then it if you discard a card with six or more power when you use the Meat Axe, it gives you another form of Intimidate. So what it allows you to do is get new lines where you use uh, a couple Intimidate cards and then use your weapon for the attack itself. And and that can be another one where they just can't block it. Yeah, so double barraging beatdown into Meat Axe, discarding a six, is actually a very good turn. If they're both yellow, you're still pushing through 11. So that's, that's uh -huh. a really, really good turn. Yeah, upwards of 13 damage for three cards. Very good. Yes, very good. Very good DPC. So that's an interesting line that we think we're going to see people at least exploring in the upcoming meta. But to do all this, you're going to need some staples, and these are the cards that Reinar really likes and just needs. Uh, we mentioned early Blood Rush Bellow and Barraging Beatdown for sure. Seemed like for yeah, every build, they're, you need those cards. they're his two best cards. Blood Rush Bellow is just so amazing. It enables your huge attack turns. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just one you're going to have to play. The other one is Barraging Beatdown. Now, this one requires more uh, setup because you have to have multiple intimidates on your turn. Right, but it's just so valuable. It seems it's it's a good arsenal target if you can't if you can't seem to dig up a mm. or a blood rush bellow a barraging beatdown is mm. uh, a couple more maybe tier two staples. I, I would say reckless swing for for one. Reckless swing is a card that you always have to be aware of if you're playing against Reiner. It's, it's so, so good. valuable. It's so impactful. It, it's one of the few ways where you can kill your opponent on their turn. Yes, yeah, so you effectively start the game with a two life advantage if you are using an effective re reckless swing. And a lot of people don't see it coming at the end of the game. You can close out a game and and win just with a reckless swing. And I said these are tier two staples, but I want to kind of harken back to maybe tier one staples. Wrecker Romp Blue, which is a blue block for three, six cost attack, mm -hmm. I think is an absolute staple in every Reinar build ever. Uh-huh, definitely. So it you don't actually want to play the card. No. It's just, it's so valuable as a blocker or as a pitcher or as a card to just discard from your hand. And it's the only one that Reinar can use that does all three of those. Yes, it fulfills every need you want in the deck, except attacking, so you yeah. probably won't attack with a card. Uh, to go along, Alpha Rampages are good, um, Awakening Bellows are good. These are all good cards for Reinar, things he's going to want to have to play. Yeah, so uh, I think that kind of covers his, his general play style. Sure. He's an explosive character, he can kind of play mid-rangey. Uh, and if that's something you're into, you kind of like his style. Yep. Do you have any closing thoughts for people who out there who are ready to build their Reinar deck? What, what's the one piece of advice you'd give to a Reinar player? Uh, I would say be patient. Don't go for it when you don't need to. Patience is key with this deck to make him work effectively. 
Absolutely. Guys, I 100% agree. This is exciting. Uh, shout out again to our community and our patrons and all you guys watching that have given us great suggestions. Mm -hmm. We're going to get through all of the Welcome to Wraith Heroes. Uh, if you haven't checked us out yet, check us out at patreon.com slash hometown TCG. Jump in our Discord. Get practicing and get ready for these upcoming Road to Nationals calling events. And uh, until next time, my name is Josh. And I'm John. And we'll see you around.